Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and Ikoria early streamer event is a day away. I'll be participating on the 15th, uh, that's Wednesday, uh, in part thanks to Wizards. So we'll get to test out all the new cards in best of one format on MTG Arena uh, before the public. So in light of that, I've been brewing a bunch of decks. Uh, for those of you who do want to catch live, I will be on around 1 p.m. Eastern time, and then be streaming throughout the day. Everything will be then archived onto my YouTube channel, so you can catch it there. I've put together over 20 lists, uh, so you can catch everything on my Aetherhub account. Uh, that's the easiest way to see everything. You can download the deck lists, everything like that. Um, so what we have here is uh, proof of concept. All of them are proof of concept, never been played. Want to test them out, early step, preface, before people say yada yada. Um, so what we want to uh, keep in mind, uh, best of one format, we can't build a sideboard yet without really knowing what the meta is like, what you want to hedge against, and uh, kind of focusing on some key cards. So early Ravnica standard, we had Jeskai Control with Niv-Mizzet at the top end. That deck was kind of the go-to in terms of control. Um, so with the printing of the new Narset, I'm hoping that we can play some form of Jeskai again. Um, so the new Narset is... A really versatile card and there's some synergy so this is kind of a jeskai blue white red control list with a cycling sub theme um it's more of a kind of tap out but not counter spell control deck uh as opposed to what you're used to seeing in the blue white decks so new narset is uh jeskai in one so four mana uh for starting loyalty it uh plus ones you gain two life and add one of the jeskai colors and you can only spend that mana on non-creature spells um, the minus two is you draw a card and then you discard a card and you can deal, uh, damage equal to the, uh, CMC of that card to a permanent, like a creature or a planeswalker. Um, so there's kind of some synergy here. Uh, you can discard stuff and then get it back with Elspeth Conquer's death afterwards. Similarly, you can cycle stuff and then, uh, well, you actually, you can't do the cycle, but, um, I'll explain in a sec. Um, so you got an set there, and then its ultimate is uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you get to shock something. Um, basically for the life gain ramp and then um, like a cycling discard kind of effect as removal. Um, so the deck itself, kind of how I have it is card advantage, kill stuff, and then cycle. The main way we win the game is through Yadaro, uh, the wandering monster. So this is something that you can discard to Narset deal seven damage, so pretty much kill anything. You can kill a Nisa that just came down an uptick, uh, pretty much any creature as well. Um, and then if this goes into the graveyard with Elspeth Conqueror's Death, you get it back as a 9-9 Trample Haste, which should close the game out pretty quickly. It also allows you to cycle in the early game, goes back into your library, uh, so it replaces itself, goes back in the library. If you cycle four more times with it, you get to cast it for free. So that's why we're playing four, even though it's legendary, you're not traditionally casting this as a seven mana spell. Um, card advantage, you have the Omen of the Sea to kind of set up your draws, scry, keep it at instant speed. You can pick that up with Teferi and then recycle it that way. A uh, couple Scorching Dragon Fires as the removal of choice. Uh, the Exile is still probably relevant with a lot of graveyard synergies coming out of Abzan. Uh, four Brazen Borrowers. Um, the reason I'm going Brazen Borrower, it's a clock against more controlling decks but also if you think like in terms of mutate if they put everything up on one creature you can just bounce it and then they have to reset and rebuild so it's a pretty big tempo play uh, if your opponent invests a lot of mana into something like that uh, i'm doing in terms of sweepers two clarions for shatter depending on how aggressive the meta is you can scale these differently so you can go three clarions uh three shatters and vice versa um and then I have three Narsets just to kind of tie together uh, the Planeswalker package. Uh, the Narsets will prevent your opponent from drawing cards, but also kind of dig us to pretty much everything in the deck except Yudaros and the Brazen Borrowers. Uh, a couple Chemisters Insight. This is another card that synergizes well with Narset. You can minus, deal four damage to something, and then jumpstart it back from your graveyard. Um, so you have pretty much all these that can be played at instant speed. And then... Um, three Elspeth Conquers Death on the top end. Uh, one of each castle for white and blue, just to kind of round it out. We have the Trinome, which is the three mana uh, producing land. 
uh, uh, blue, white, and red, and then it could also be cycled late game if you draw a lot of cards. So this is the first iteration of the deck I'm going to be playing. Um, I really like control, so I want to try to find what type of control deck works best in this new format. A um, couple cards that we could probably consider in here is obviously uh, Dream Trawler. Uh, might come in in lieu of a Brazen Borrower or something like that. Um, there's also the Ultimatum. Uh, so 7 mana, deals 5, draws 5, gains 5. So it's not as flashy as some of the other ones, but it's kind of like a Sphinx's Revelation in a way. Uh, with Teferi, you can cast it at instant speed, and you can basically kill something, buffer your life total, and refill your hand. So that's something that I want to consider as well, just seeing how the deck plays out. We might want to just trim some Brazen Borrowers down and try those two cards there, or play it instead of Chemister's Insight. Um, there's some options in how we can play that. Uh, there's the Jeskai Dragon Mutant thing. Um, we only really have four targets. Uh, Yadaro, if we're casting Yadaro, we're not really going to mutate onto it. So it's not that reliable in terms of actually getting off the, um, the mutate ability. And the, the Castle Ardenvale creates humans, so it doesn't work that way either. Um, so this is pretty much the first iteration of the deck. I will be playing this deck for sure tomorrow um, to see. Uh, I do have a bunch of decks. I put a poll up on my Instagram, mdg underscore joe number two, uh, just to see what people want to see. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get time to play 20 odd decks tomorrow. I'm going to try to do half an hour to 45 minutes with each, um, but I'll be playing some. And then whatever we don't get to, I'll play uh, later in the week. And then for those of you who tune in for the budget decks, I did post a, a budget mono blue deck. I'll do a deck tech on that, hopefully. Uh, but if not, uh, usually the budget decks I do about after the first week. Uh, usually what I want to do is get a feel for um, how the format is, play a couple uh, drafts or sealed. Um, it's usually when uncommons kind of shine, and it gives me an idea of what I can put into decks there. It's easier on the interface when you have all your uncommons. Plug and play, put things together, and we can go from there. Um, otherwise, hopefully see you tomorrow. Uh, again, I'll be streaming from about 1 p.m. Eastern onwards on Twitch, mtg underscore Joe. And if you haven't done so, if you do enjoy the content, if you could drop a sub here on YouTube, that would be greatly appreciated. It's free and helps out the channel a lot. Thanks for stopping by, and happy Akoria!